Welcome back to the trenches. NBA Live. I'm here to show you guys how to do a pick and roll. The simplest kind of move in virtual basketball, really. No really big idea behind it. Nothing too crazy. I can't really show you how to shoulder, how to do a step back, how to do any type of variation. It's not much variation. It's really just memorization. So I've seen a lot of videos in general on like 2K and live on how to do certain moves like pick a roll um how to hold down the circle button and go uh, under all that is just algorithms it's not real basketball so i'm gonna show you guys how to do a memorization kind of trick to see i think three to four uh situations you have in the nba live pick and roll so i'll show you guys right here and listen this shit is not hard it's not hard at all <laughs> you're just memorizing that's all memorizing three to four situations inside of a pick and roll in NBA Live 19, 2018. Remember to drop a follow as well, subscribe, all that good stuff. Comment, like, share, everything. Trying to sell me this man. Let me just get into a game right here. So the following example I'm gonna show is in the league. I'm gonna show you guys how to abuse it in certain ways. The three to four little memorization tricks. It is memorizing how an object is looking inside of a game. I'm not gonna use real basketball terms because I don't wanna confuse nobody. So let me just start really one game. I just need one game. And I'm gonna show you guys how exactly each and every part of the pick and roll is broken down. Not too much deep analysis is really not needed. It's just you're memorizing a situation. The title is how to abuse or how to use it to the maximum, right? Like. You can really abuse this type of pick and roll inside of the game. It's the same thing in NBA Live 18. Now we're in NBA Live 19. It's the same type of way. I'm gonna get into a game. Well, perfect. The Warriors. Was like, oh, I'll play the Warriors. My guy doesn't start, but I'll surely be playing in the game and I'll have enough opportunity to show you guys multiple ways and how to abuse each and every situation. Like I said from before, three to four type of scenarios where you're seeing the pick and roll and you're seeing how to break it down and then uh, variations of the pick roll. So there are variations, but not real life variations. So just button pressing variations. Yeah, just button pressing variations is nothing too crazy. It's honestly no real life variations. You just tap this, tap that, hold this, whatever. So very basic, very to the point. There's no need to go into deep detail because you can't do the actual detail that I would explain. I'm just gonna explain the variations of button pressing. All right, so let me get in the game. On the free throws, I gotta wait till I can come in. Something, something, come on, hurry up, hurry up. That guy's also a point guard as well. I mean, my real what? life goal. So, what the uh, fuck? let me try to get the ball over here. Might be shooting guard right now. Let me get this. So, you make sure you're pulling out really deep on the deep three. So, this is the first very, this, there's so many. But first, I wanna be able to space on everyone. And how I want to do that is isolation. I want to press up on my D-pad. I want to hold down on L1. I'll probably have a little example, a little controller example. And then as I go around the screen, I want to be able to pass to the open person. At least one person is going to be open in the pick and roll. That's the whole point. That's one of the main points of the pick and roll. And as many chances as I can get, I want to be able to pull my guy over. I can switch by pressing the L3 button. And then uh, he can pop, pull anyone to the side using the right or left analog stick. When anyone's wide open, one to maybe two people will be open. Yeah, my guy's not playing a lot of minutes, so it's gonna be a lot of cuts. It's gonna be a lot of quarters going by. I can also slip by double tapping the L button or LB button before he comes. And it's all engineered, it's all engineered situations. Like if you were to pass too early, too late, it's all right there. You just have to read how the patterns are. As my guy's rolling over here, I can break nice. down each and every play, seeing how Steph was trying to literally hedge over. He couldn't because I didn't let him come over or sit on the screen in front. One other memorization trick is the roll and then a quick double tap. So he can set right before. Another trick here is he rolls and then I go towards where he rolls and I start to move the defense. And now I'm forcing the other side of like one or two people most likely two people one person is at least going to be open on the other side instead of me being open because i'm forcing them to come back to me do some pick and pop variations have him pop over he's not much of a player to pop also memorizing some of your teammates abilities 
Some can pop, some can roll. You just gotta know which player can do which. So it's not so much of just analyzing each and every teammate. You just gotta memorize who can do what. You don't even need to like watch the game. You just memorize some of their attributes or just look it back up when you pause the game and then you can see like, oh, he can shoot, boom. Let me do a pick and pop with him. Nice and simple. It's not complicated in virtual video games. So a nice zoom in pass. Make sure your passing is all right. My pass is really low, it's a 70. But make sure your passing is really, really good. You wanna take some risky passes. Also wanna roll and then kind of fade off and then shoot an open three if I can make one. So depending on how he's sitting, he might be sitting on screen already or he might hedge. Depends on the situation. He's got to read and react. It's a very read and react type of play. You can like dance around the screen too, as I was doing here. Let me do a little replay. You can dance around the screen as well as you're coming over. To the right or left, you just switch back to the other side. Just play with it. Just play with the algorithm. That's all you're doing. Call for early. Let's look down. Also, having some of the traits too can really help you as well. Having some of the pick and roll, pick and pop traits can help. Once you call for a screen, be really far from it and do a speed dribble. You just hold down the R2. You can draw back in too as well. Let me do a little replay. Can ask for the screen if he's not hedging it, he's just sitting there being picked on. You can cross back into his direction, so now the pass is a lot easier. I ain't pass it there, but you know, <laughs> do you understand extra help too? If I'm calling over the screen, he picks it here. Extra help might come over, but in that case, it didn't. Why does they adjust to it? They'll start bringing over more extra help so. Watch out for extra help coming to the paint, coming into outside of the paint, to the corners, to the dead spots, whichever way they want an extra help. But another variation, I can have someone do a screen across, right? As I'm coming over, I have all these options. I can pass to 20. I can pass to the guy going to the paint. With the extra help, make sure you're understanding the person up. So this computer does his own screens as well, so look out for that. If you guys wanna go over handoffs, make sure you guys definitely comment, like, and subscribe. Comment handoff. You can pop with Ennis. Ennis can do that. Ennis can definitely pick and pop. It goes in. <laughs> goes in engineered. <laughs> by uh, the EA cheese, the EA A's. Make sure you guys wait till he comes over and sets that pick, supposedly. If you do it too early, you just tell him to go too early. That's all. If you're doing it correctly, it goes in every single time. Unless the help, the extra help is too strong, then he might miss, but otherwise, it's gonna go in every single time. That's a little slip action. As soon as he starts to set it, go. Especially if it's a good pick setter, if he's not, Wait till he sets it, because he might do a moving screen. I haven't seen that happen yet in NBA Live 19. I might have seen it in NBA Live 18. Definitely check out those videos. But I haven't seen it happen in NBA Live 19. You can set a pick and do what you want. You get the ball. You got the magical, I'm going to make the bucket somehow like this. <laughs> he just goes in some way somehow. <laughs> Hard hook shot right there. Barely settling up. Pretty much grounded. But it still goes in. Amazing. Amazing. I catch the time where he's sitting. He's sitting over the screen. It seems doesn't really sit much over screens at all. A defensive player is sitting on the screen. You can make sure you go the opposite way of the screen. So then once you go the opposite way of the screen, you're finding another player trying to make sure he doesn't sit. But if that doesn't work, make sure you use the screen to now come over and then have the person pop out most likely because already one person sitting he passed the hedging point he's sitting on top of the screen and make sure your teammate is popping out so you're able to pass to him at this point when he pretty much sat sort of kind of but he's hedging in this situation since he's hedging over right i want to now keep attacking his I guess his lead foot more like, cause he kind of just switched here, his left foot, but now his right foot. But now since how the game is engineered, it looks kind of weird, but you want to keep attacking his front foot. By the time he gets it and help kind of come over, came over weird as well. 
By the time he gets it, he should be finishing with the right. And then the ball goes in. Space out the floor as well. You saw me do that there. When I didn't take the screen, I started spacing out the floor. So we're already spaced out. From one point, I spaced it out even more. If I can move this. All right. I spaced it out even more. When it came over, I didn't even take the screen. I went the other way. I spaced out everything else. Which now, Hayward should be going down to the right, but then I had to spin back. So, All right, towards the end of the game, let me see if I can sneak in one more situation. Let's have our guy cut in. All right, hold on. Have someone cut in. Have one person cut in, and then you have another person. I did this in 2K, where I had one person cut in, and I had a screen going on. So I had two people available. Now that opened up to three, and you're able to shoot with someone that can make a three or having someone dash in for uh, easy layup. So that's really it. That's all the situations. The last situation was more of a 2K one, but it does work in NBA Live. Other than that, every other situation works because it's already engineered to the game. There's no mixing and matching like how you do in 2K. You have to like find out the secret formula. It's just ways that's already in the game. There's nothing else to change, nothing else to add on. So if you guys liked it, make sure you guys definitely follow, subscribe, and share. I appreciate you guys being here. And definitely make sure you guys are active and alive as well as communicating as much as possible. So I know which other videos I can do in the Discord or inside of the YouTube community. So with that, thank you so much for watching, viewing. If you liked it or not, share it. And I'll see you guys next time.